home of Super Bowl 58 between the 49ers and the Chiefs. This is KPIX CBS News Bay Area. Good evening, I'm Andrea Nakano. We are only about 21 and a half hours away from kickoff for Super Bowl 58, but who's counting, right? Tomorrow, right here on CBS, the 49ers will take on the Chiefs in Las Vegas with a shot at the franchise's first Lombardi Trophy in 29 years. And of course, we've had live coverage in Las Vegas all week long. That continues right here tonight with Matt Lively and Juliet Goodrich at the Westgate Sportsbook Center. Hello out there, how's it going, guys? Oh my goodness. Hey, we are counting down. We've been counting down the entire week here. I don't think I've ever been in Las Vegas for more than two days. We're going on day number eight. We're ready for a Super Bowl. I'm a strict 48 hour rule in Vegas. I have broken that by quite a bit. Big time. For good reason. For good reason. You were giving me a pep talk in here because I'm trying to hit a couple of bets oh. tonight. Nick Bose is doing the same thing because I know he wants revenge against the team that took him out four years ago. Yeah. So we don't condone. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, you guys get a rematch. How exciting. Payback, baby. Let's go. For the record. Bosa's message for tomorrow is short and sweet, but let's hope he had a little more to say when he delivered his weekly pep talk to the team earlier today. I don't remember the first time, um, which is surprising, but um, I usually remember traumatic experiences. It's funny how guys who are so confident in everything they do, they're just not used to always speaking in front of groups. and. He used to tell me that was the most nervous he'd be throughout the whole week. He'd start getting nervous about it on Wednesdays. No, it's it's been good for me. I've I've kind of enjoyed dealing with the stress and and kind of facing in something that I'm not used to. Now he's got the biggest speech of his career, and the nerves are coming out. Whenever I think about it, I kind of get anxious. But um, once I get it down, kind of what I'm thinking to say, I'll be. And of course, I had to ask him if he'd give us an idea of what he'd say. I have a couple thoughts in mind that I won't share. Ah, no dice. He wouldn't share what he's telling the team. That is the most amped I think I've ever seen him, though. So he's getting pumped up for the yeah, game, Nick right? Yeah, is pretty calm, cool, and collected at all oh, yeah. given times. We all are, and Brock yeah. Purdy. Okay, so we're at the West Gate, the Superbook here. This is where all things gaming happens and celebrations and all sorts of things. We are noticing a big increase in all of the fans. Yeah. It's like they've all arrived today. The taxi lines are longer. Ways to get around take longer. On the Strip, it's crowded. In fact, I was just checking out the NFL experience and yeah. that's outside of Mandalay Bay and boy it was like a crowd a sea of people look at that Matt we oh. call it hallway gridlock and you aren't kidding me this is just the way to get in and out of the uh, NFL experience and a lot of people were willing to do it because they were like hey we came all this way we're gonna get that selfie we're gonna get those souvenirs we are here and you know a lot of these people uh, like myself, we don't have a ticket to the game. We're just here. Well, I'm here working, but we're here, you know, to support our team. So we'll send it back to you, and we'll be here all evening long and for the Red and Gold Report at 7 o'clock. The Lunar New Year kicked off this morning around the globe, and Asian communities here in the Bay Area ushered in the extra lucky year of the Dragon with celebrations in San Francisco, San Jose, and Oakland. The Lunar New Year is held at a different time each year, depending on the position of the moon and lasts for several weeks. This year's big parade and festival in San Francisco is scheduled for Saturday, February 24th. Pleasant Hill police are investigating the death of a city janitor whose body was found early this morning. The 37-year-old victim's wife found him in the parking lot of Pleasant Hill Park just before 5 o'clock. He was a janitor working at that park. His wife grew worried about him when he didn't come home after his shift. Police say he was found with stab wounds. They have not made any arrests or released any information on a possible suspect or motive. They are asking for help from the public as they investigate. Well, trouble at Ocean Beach this afternoon. Surf rescue teams called out to help a swimmer in trouble. A CHP chopper was also there to help. We are told one victim was brought to shore by fire department rescue swimmers. No word on their condition. And just getting word, the fire department also used a helicopter to rescue a child who was stuck on the cliffs at Fort Funston. The child was not hurt. They just could not get back up 
on their own. And Contra Costa Health sent out its hazmat team this afternoon to assess community impact after reports of an accidental release of petroleum coke dust at the Martinez refinery. The county said the team found no evidence of off-site impacts. The refinery released petroleum coke dust back in October as well. Hazmat found no impacts at that time either. Though some people pushed back saying they found gray and black dust on their properties. About 16 miles away, Chevron reported flaring at the Richmond refinery before 9 o'clock this morning. No reported health impacts from that incident either. Sausalito has made it a tradition in recent years on Super Bowl weekend to celebrate its own bowl or bowls that is of soup. It's the eighth annual Sausalito Soup Herb Bowl taking visitors on a culinary tour of downtown Sausalito. 13 participating restaurants are hoping their special concoction earns them the coveted Super Bowl champion crown. The tasters who get to vote say competition is pretty stiff. There's a crab bisque, mm -hmm. uh, coconut curry soup mm -hmm. um, down at the barrel house, and yeah. and then someone, oh, the, the Trident, they had a um, Portuguese a, bean. Portuguese bean. Mm -hmm. That was very good. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, so we're just we're still sussing it out. We haven't decided yet who's number one. Mm, that sounds good right about now. Doreen and Donna tell us this is one of their favorite ways to get out into the community and indulge in the joys of food. Yum. Well, thank you so much for watching. Up next, a special edition of the Red and Gold Report live from Las Vegas. I will see you back here at 11. Good night.